Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we are recording a, an episode in response to a Facebook post in the self Sewn Wardrobe group where someone said that they felt frustrated in their sewing right. because they were throwing away like a third of the things that they were making. Right. So Which I, totally shocked me. I It really yeah. did. I, I'm surprised. And... I would imagine that they're getting thrown away because, like, they don't fit. Right. Or... Well, and they there were a lot of responses to this uh-huh. that said, me too, or I throw away a half, or, you, you know, right. that type. Yes. I was just shocked. I was really, really shocked. And uh, we've done a couple episodes that sort of relate to this. We've done, when should you make a muslin? So we'll, right. we'll touch on that. <laughs> right. So go back and listen to that. Right. Uh, then we've also, and we're just laughing because, you know, of course... That's a step in the testing process, right. right? Well, and again, what would Zidi do? Yep. She would test. Test. Right? And, and you then you also, test, test, test. I don't want to say, uh, you know, I don't think we're coming at this in, in, a, in a place of like, well, we never throw anything away. We did do an episode on like when to quit. On oh, a, sometimes, on a project, yeah, yeah, remember? yeah. Or sometimes that project can turn into something else that can happen too. Well, I right. I discussed a Morris blazer that I just really uh, did some flawed things to. Where's and that I, anorak? I, it's not. There's nothing. Wrong. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's just never it's going to be finished done. ever. <laughs> it's just not you done. You gotta finish it for Zelda when there's, she's twenty. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that thing. Okay, so um, we talked about the like when things when when you have actually like given up or thrown it away and right. actually the two things that popped into my mind they were jackets. So this is the Morris blazer that I'd neglected to follow an instruction and then did it stitch that right. it was just too much to take out it was better off just like well i, I guess it. i i really tried to think back i know you okay did. Yes, and you think, really did. how many things did i throw what did i throw away um i'm sure i've thrown away things yes never a third there's absolutely if, if i would have been I, I hand it to these people. If I'd have been thrown away a third, I'd have quit. No, I know. I'm I, like, I can't believe that they have the tenacity. I, I'm very impressed. That's by a it. lot of frustration. So yes, that's why yes. we wanted to, uh, you know, address um, it. Now, I have made things that I didn't, wasn't satisfied with, maybe, or was less satisfied with. Uh huh. Sure. Um, or, and realized I just didn't wear them as much because I didn't like them as much as something else I liked. Right. But I would have not considered them failures. Well, I think this just. But comes... I do that even if I buy clothes. Sure. Or I, I really think for us, for me and you, I think this just comes from the fact that we do we do get to dedicate a lot of time to sewing, and we get to dedicate time being like careful and exploring well, and testing, and I think maybe some of the people in the group are people who just get to sew every once in a while, and they don't know the processes that might help them not to throw away well, a third. Well, I of think the stuff. this is the this is a process mm-hmm. of. Fast doesn't make happy. <laughs> good, good sense. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just because it sewed up quick or, you know, whatever, that does not make happy. Okay. It does not make it all. There's nothing wrong with taking your time. That is that is like a whole other therapy session that fast does not make happy. Right. Don't you think? I mean, that is really, I think that's something in our society, in the DIY world, that we need to have a reckoning well, about. You know, <laughs> if I wanted a t-shirt fast, I honestly think I would go to Target and get a $6 t-shirt. Right. Okay. I could try it on. If it was $6 and I ruined it, I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't have any time invested in it or whatever. I mean... Go buy a $6 t-shirt, I guess. I don't okay. know. So so I think one thing that we've touched on before, but that is a really good piece of advice, if someone were to say, hey, Mal and ZD, I throw away a third of the things that I'm making, try it on at every point. As you're point. making it. Yes, absolutely. At every point of the construction process. Okay, so we joke sometimes about sewing in our underwear. Or, because we do, we, but right. even though we joke about it, that is truly it's, what we do. It's really true. Um, and Mallory's husband's constantly, "Oh, I'm sorry," and I'm like, 
you know, you've when, seen me in my bra 5,000 times. You like, know, don't worry about it anymore. When Sam is over here, he makes sure to knock before <laughs> he brings up like a kid who needs to nurse or something like that. You know, he's he knows that we're going to be in those underwear. You know where it gets a little dicey is when you're sewing your own underwear. And I just think even though we're we're mother and daughter and like Sam and you and I are really close – I think it would be inconsiderate of me to put my bare bum on one of our sewing chairs. So you have to like get in and out of the underwear, you know. Well, and I I have been known to wear the skimpiest thing yes. I have and put the underwear over the top. You know, you can do that too until you get to the end. So maybe. Although if you use the floozy doozy pattern, your underwear will fit. Because there you go. I've never tried it on. No, and nope. It fits. <laughs> Yeah, I just got to. I just made some for a live broadcast, and I came up to a really lovely note from my mom, which I can't read on air because it's full of profanity. But I said it was lovely. It was a compliment that yeah. they they fit. It was something like fit my fr- freaking butt, but that's not what yeah, it said. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that that is fabulous. But a sewing a garment for yourself, who you're right. you're probably an adult listening to this. Sewing a garment for yourself is different from sewing a bag. It's different from sewing a piece of children's clothing. Um, it's different from sewing a quilt. Right. The it, the most important thing is fit. That's why you're. That's, that's what you're getting to. The satisfaction yes. doesn't it's come the from. Fit. It's not not the fabric or uh-uh. the, the first satisfaction comes from the fit. If you could have the most perfect collar, the most yes. perfect buttonholes, the most perfect facings right and these things will matter zero percent to you if you don't like how it looks that's right on you, you don't like you the fit if you don't like the way it feels if you don't like the way it goes on if you don't like the way you know you wear it and how it feels when you're moving around or if it's too confining or if it's too loose you want fit right fit 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 so focusing on that fit I think is what might make a person who's feeling really frustrated happier. So, and you focus on fit. First of all, look in your closet at what you like. Well, that's the other thing. The style that you like or the style that you like the way it looks on you. Not every, not every, we've talked about pattern envelopes too. Okay, and mom, what do you mean by style? Do you only, you know... Elaborate on, you know, I think about a lot of things when I hear the word, I like this style of shirt or I like this style of underwear. It means so many things. Let's elaborate on that a little bit. Okay. Okay. I mean, to me, it's probably the cut of the fabric and the type of fabric. Yes. So So it's shape. It's shape. How many seams are in it? Where did the seams fall on my body? Oh, great. Yeah. You know, that, you know, how does this fabric fall on you know, I am really into knits. I can barely wear a woven anymore. This I is... don't even like wovens. I want a knit. I want yeah. the way it feels. Um, you know, when I'm out now, I've gotten into this aerial stuff. And what? What, what do you like what? to do? What do I what do? do you like to do? You know, and like, <laughs> you know, your dad and I, you know, walk by a um, kid's playground and I go over and like invert myself upside down and hang. I want knits. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm just, uh, I knits are convenient. Knits don't wrinkle. Knits pack easily. So there's a lot of things about knits I really like right now. So I just am imagining our hypothetical uh, stitcher here. Right. Who maybe is a person who's like sewn other things, uh, like quilts and bags. Right, right. And, she's, and so, so she's accomplished in stitching. Yes. Yes. But then when, she, when you know... When they go to fit their I said own, she. It's okay. I think they, the person, uh, everyone, yeah, the person yeah. who posted, I believe, right. you know, it, was I believe a woman. she was a female. But yeah. when, when a person then goes and tries to make something for themselves, maybe they're intimidated by knits, right? That could be true. Knits, yes, yes. Even though that's maybe what they're wearing on a daily basis, right? right? And man. I, I'm not against like making clothes out of quilting cotton, but it can go bad. Okay, when well, you're trying quilting to... cotton does not conform nicely to your body. You Rarely, know... I think, are people nowadays choosing to buy clothing that is made from that weight of fabric and that. I don't how right, right. how many sundresses so, yes. do you see that are co- made out of like a woven cotton anymore? 
Not they, a ton. They have some sort of knit. They have, or they're they are they are cotton, but they've got a spandex, you know, element to them somehow. And well, and it's funny because like Closet Case just came out with a, a woven sundress, and it's, right. it's got princess seams and stuff, and it's, right. it's really cute. And there are, you know, we're not saying like the, I'm you, not saying they're not cute. Yeah, and right. that you can't make it or something, right. but you that might be. I see a lot of people make things that have ended up having like too much ease. And it's made out of a, a fabric that I don't think is really like what they are really wanting to wear as a garment. Or, and that's what or that they are them. used to wearing as a garment. Yes, there you go. So we are used to that 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 elastic element. Yes, we are. We are used to, you know, the spandex being in the fabric. We're used to that give. Jeans all have spandex in them now. Yep. Okay, so when you go to a woven, a stable woven, which is like quilting cotton. Yeah, sure. Um, you're dissatisfied because it doesn't have the movement that you, that that you're used to. And we are making some, you know, like generalizations right. here and stuff. But I think that this is a this is something that we do run into a lot. So when you are going to pick out, you know, those patterns or something right. like that, you know, first I think you should go to your closet or a memory or uh, <laughs> or something that you liked, right. and you need to note what you liked about it first right before going on before before going and picking a pattern okay before going and buying fabric i want i think you should look at that and in our wardrobe planner that's what we do in the well, beginning of every month when we focus on a different garment i so, say i say yeah. how many of these things do you have describe your favorite pair of shorts or your favorite pair of underwear or your favorite shirt and you need to write about the fit and you need to write about the fabric content and that's what I do at the beginning of each month with that planner is you know have people reflect upon that and I think that's really important so what were you going to say well what you're saying is what I have preached for a really long time look at yourself and not the pattern envelope so let's okay. let's because that pattern envelope many times is a drawing. Yeah. So that's totally screwing you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is not gonna hang like that. It's not gonna look like that. You know, they've made it marketable. Right. Okay. And I'm I'm not putting anyone down here um in their marketing their patterns. No, okay. no, you gotta draw something. I, I mean there's gotta know. be something there. <laughs> and sometimes there is a photograph, but I got news for you, that girl is not you. Right. And that you know, that person on that envelope it's not you and i'll tell you another thing if you turn that person around they might have that clipped on them to look like that and they're not moving or the garment you know there, there's yes yeah, sometimes it just doesn't even fit i've seen that too and i'm I, like i, I can't see, even believe they published this. i know i'm like dude uh, yeah i would have like, yeah I, yeah anyway okay well let's take a let's take a quick message break and come back and talk about uh picking patterns and uh what's what's easy what's not to sacrifice a uh, good fit for easy and not right. to sacrifice uh, and not to go, go in too uh, complex on some of your first forays into garment sewing. Mallory, tell me all about your dream come true wardrobe planner. I have been dreaming about creating a wardrobe planner for years. Oh, no, since you were like, eight and started drawing with crayons <laughs> yes I love uh I love to sew and I love to write with paper products and and pens and everything and we have published a wardrobe planner we have a couple of different options on our website there is a universal wardrobe planner that you can purchase for $19.99 and print over and over again it'll help you plan any project you wish and then we also have themed wardrobe planners. And do you know what's special about those, Mom? What's special? What? Um, they include some hand-drawn illustrations by yours truly for whatever we're doing in the self-sewn wardrobe group that month, like PJs or underwear or our month of planning. Because we theme our months. Yes. So you can tackle a new wardrobe section each month in order to build your perfect self-sewn wardrobe so for more information about these you can go to sewhere.com slash planner and also check out the membership options because the universal wardrobe planner is included with the backstitch and straight stitch and zigzag memberships so go to sewhere.com slash planner and 
we're back. So, you are, you know, they didn't choose you to model for the pattern envelope, right? No matter <laughs> who you are. They didn't make you, they didn't use you as the standard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I have to say, I just want to throw this out here. I personally am not a super hard person to fit. Really? I end up fitting into a lot of straight sizes. Mm. So I just want to say this, still, even with not having a ton of like adjustments to make on myself, I still have to be careful about what styles I pick because I can end up not liking it. Right. All right. So this is totally subjective. We are not going to go into like, if you're pear shaped, you have to buy this type of pattern right. or something like that. You know, whatever. Uh, but you were talking about seams and seam lines. And I think that that is one place where this is where you need to be looking at the pattern envelope in a discerning fashion, right? Yes. And, you know, kind of to backtrack when you're looking in your sure. closet and you put on that, you put on that t-shirt you like, more than likely it fits well at the shoulders, mm -hmm. right? Or Now, you can also put on a shirt and look at it and go, oh, this doesn't fit at my shoulders. <laughs> Why did I like this? If you get really get to yes. being critical about it, and that's what okay, that's why I make my t shirts. Right. What happens, Mallory, when I order a t shirt like from one of from from like, you know, Acro or what do I do? You always modify it. I have to recut it. Uh -huh. I have to remake the shirt. It just doesn't I get a small and it's just huge in the shoulders. I hope we don't put you our know. t shirt promo in this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You'll have to remake it. I have to, but but well, I don't remake every T-shirt. No, I know, know what you mean. Yeah, but I guess again, it's the line, it's the cut. Yes, and I wonder if the people who are having all of these failures. Um, the person that posted said, "Well, I even called the designer and asked if I had the right fabric and all this." Well. That's good because that that that's cool. Yeah, we, that's we've talked about this cool before. That that. The pattern was made for those fabrics that the yes. designer list. Yes. Yes. yes, that is what they have found that works. It doesn't mean you can deviate later. But what do I also say? You cannot break a rule until you know why there is a rule, or you've mastered the rule. Right, yeah, you have exactly. to master the rule before you can break it. Now, sometimes there's a happy accident, but you know, more than likely, you can't just jump into big changes sure. and think it's going to think it's going to come out okay. Um but that pattern uh -huh. that this person used, I don't I don't know why they failed. Um did it not fit? You know, did it not hang? but she did not mention fitting the pattern or making a muslin. No, she didn't. And you know, that is absolutely one thing. Or I would have a sloper that I could lay the pattern over and mm -hmm. go, oh, wow, this shoulder's way too broad for me or whatever. Right. And the other thing is taking those measurements, measuring my shoulders and then measuring the shoulder of the dress. People don't do that anymore. You know, people don't do that. They don't think about it. And all of a sudden you have this huge wide shoulder or something. Yeah, I think that when you start to learn about fabrics that exist nowadays. Right. Okay. And you can look at patterns. I think that something I'm really glad that I know how to do is I get to look at a garment and say, it needs to stretch here, but it doesn't need to stretch here. But it needs to, I don't need ease here, but I need yes. ease here. You know, like you're talking about making a muslin and I was... <laughs> bringing up the Kelly Anorak, right? <laughs> okay, the only thing I did to make that, to to really know if that fit me, was I did, I measured the shoulders. I looked at the because size range. Because it's a coat. Yes, I looked at the size range. I, you know, kind of right. decided, okay, I think I'm that size. And then I measured the shoulders, okay? And then I measured where it would go on my shoulders. Okay, it's a little further out, and we are going to take up seam allowance. I will be wearing clothes under this. And then I looked at the bust. I'm not a person who has to fight with a, a disproportionately or non-standard size bust, right. right? But I looked at that. It's all good. Now, me, in my experience of making garments, I felt okay cutting into my fabric then. 
Right. Okay. Not everybody but would. But that is a garment that hung from your shoulders. It was not fitted anywhere else. You got else. it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like being able to look at these things. Okay. Right. Being able to look at the areas of the garment that need to quote fit or need to be uh, close to the body measurement right. and areas that don't. Like if you're going to make a I think we've talked about this in another podcast. If you're going to make some peasant blouse that has some huge gathered bust area right. where there's actually four times as much fabric as, as anyone ever needed, as the circumference right. of the bust, obviously, even if you have gigantic boobs, you might not need an FBA in that, even if right. you do an FBA well, and everything else. And okay? I'll tell you something else that might be funny about that. Yeah. If you're a smaller person or a person, you know, that, that, Sometimes you can't take that voluminous fabric. You will make that and you'll like, oh, my God, I look like it's a It's overwhelming yes, me. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, so, you know, that happens too. But I, I understand, I mean, what you said. I, I don't want to take away from what you said. Sure. If no, there's, yeah, I don't think you are. If there's, you know, I would probably not worry about an FBA. Yeah. Okay. In a peasant blouse. That's, yes. And guess who looks really not happy in a peasant blouse? You. Me. I just don't feel like I look good with all that fabric okay, on me. And then here's the other deal, I guess. We get so many people who post in the group and say, help me with fit here. And then other people are like, there's nothing wrong. That's right. You look great. And I don't we think We can be overcritical. I don't think those people are being right. falsely um, encouraging. No, I don't I either. I think that they right. are genuinely like, and I mean, sometimes when... I don't do this in the group because I don't know everybody, like, personally. But, right. you know, we'd have people come in the shop and be like, oh, there's just a little this. And I remember Dixie with her yep. her wavy stripe knit fabric saying she didn't match her stripes. Right. And I, I went, psh, 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 Dixie, no. You, you can't. They can't it. be matched. And you right. look fabulous. And right. you need to just own that. You know, so I can't say that to everyone who I don't know personally in the group. But that will happen. Okay, so that right. will happen. Or you've made it out of a fabric that, uh, or you've chosen a style that got advertised to you. Right. Like you mentioned. Okay. Or chosen something too complex. There is a fine balance between too complex and then overly simple. An over, a very simple garment. Let's talk about our very own Easy Tea class. Okay. This garment is a dolman sleeve woven t-shirt. It has, but it's made with your measurements. It is made also. with your measurements, but it has two pattern pieces. Right, it's it, what we call a pancake pattern in our house. That's right. It it's two pieces together, just slapped together. It doesn't have a lot of opportunity for seaming. Okay, so let's go from easy T, where it's two pattern pieces. So you got two side seams and two shoulder seams, right? Because you have two sides and right. you have two shoulders. Then let's go to like, I don't know, thirty piece seamed like bustier top okay where there's where it's like whatever two right. inch pieces all the way around the body right. that would allow for super duper tailoring all right we need to find a happy medium here right. you know maybe you want to make your first thing out of knit so it's a little more forgiving maybe you're cool with the easy d because it is a class that's based on your measurements it isn't a um a pattern that's dictated to you but Keep that in mind. You know, you want those opportunities for fitting if you are a person with a body that has a lot of difference between, like, bust, waist, hip. So what you just said, and I said, my journey has been I have not thrown that many things away. Yes. Okay? Now, I I started sewing in the 60s. Woven fabric, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's about what we had. Um there were a few cotton, you know, like interlock knits, but they didn't stretch a whole lot anyway. Um, the first thing I made was a pancake garment, if you remember. I laid down and traced around myself, right? Right. I was eight years old. Okay. Yes. And it worked. Who knows why? Right. Okay. But I, I, I did know there needed to be like seam allowance or right. something. But, you know, who knows why that worked, but it did. The very next garment I made for myself was an A-line skirt. So think about that. Right. It had to fit my waist mm -hmm. and, and just slide over my hips. Right. Okay. The next thing I made after that was a sheath dress. Mm -hmm. And I remember making it and it winding up being too too broad in the shoulders because mm -hmm. I didn't know about FBAs. Right. I didn't know. You know, I, I didn't understand. I wasn't that aware that, you know, my breast 
were out of proportion to my shoulders by the standard of the pattern. Yes. yes. Okay. So I saw that and I I cut it back the next time, you know, mm-hmm. and and I it wasn't hard to fit my hips. Yeah. I just took it in, yeah. so to speak. And then I got better and then I got to a princess seam shift. Mm-hmm. You know, I bet I made that sheath or shift 50 times. Right. Okay. I added I added pockets. I added a collar. I added a sleeve. I took a sleeve away. I added a different length sleeve. You know, uh, whatever I did. And then I knew that bodice fit me. Mm-hmm. So then when I wanted a shirtwaist dress, right? Bam. Bam. I All I had to do was cut it off and put a skirt on it. Like... I think if we were really good marketers, we would have our sheath class ready for this yes, podcast. Yes, um, uh, we should. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is I, these people that are unsuccessful, maybe they need to start over. Yes. And get the basics and not slam themselves with, you know, Rudy Tooties, hot and, with you know, cutie. doozy pattern. You know, <laughs> booty pattern, right? Like, you know, something simple. Where you can go, oh, the shoulders are too wide. Yes. And I don't have to worry about this pleat or this tuck or this thing that's supposed to cross on my chest okay, and, so you, and all of that. Yeah, you're also talking about sort of like design details yes, and things like that. Yes, there can't be that many details when you first start out. It, yeah. it will just get in the way of oh, you seeing what you need. Yeah, let's talk about Rachel. Rachel makes all these knot tops, okay? Yes. And Rachel's... Got it. Like right. she knows how to do that. But it's I also just, knit. Yes. yes. And, but I also think about that pattern, and I, I had the experience of somebody bringing in a pattern like that. That it wasn't a knot, but it had a collar that was. And they wanted a woven. It, but no, it was a knit. Woven, no. Like once you understood it, like right. it worked. But I was like, this. We are focusing so much on this design detail, right? That we are not. She is. This, she's not learning to sew. She's not getting right. the fit and da 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 da. Right. So Rachel's got her fit and she understands her pattern and all that jazz. But I just think about. I think knots are kind of popular right now, and I think about the knots. They they're a weird thing. They always got to be lined, and you're right. trying to da 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 da, and you can't tell. And you're not. You're trying not to show the wrong side of the fabric or whatever. And then like the one thing that was down below is now back up at your shoulder That's right. and stuff. So yes, I think that it's a. Choosing something without a bunch of extra design details is really good. So, like a smooth sort of. So what? Silhouette. What else in life? I mean, if you learn to play the piano, you don't even learn with both hands first. Yeah. Right. You play a scale with one hand. Mm-hmm. You know, then you then later you learn the chords with the left hand. I mean, you don't do. You know the the complicated composition. So right away, I'm going to be singing in a cabaret <laughs> in a couple of weeks. And it's, you know, call it a cabaret because it's just a bunch of single performers, like, doing different songs. And it is um, to benefit uh, you something wearing called – You your black mesh dress. No, no. It's to benefit no. something called um, City of Refuge. So it's, a, it's like a fundraiser and everything. So I'm really, like, trying to work on this. I haven't sung in public for a long time. And the other day I was doing it and I was like, man – I, so I was singing this in my head, and I was singing it randomly, and it wasn't in the right key. Right. So then I download, like, the accompaniment track, and I'm singing it in the right key. And, man, wherever that was in my range, it was just causing me to cough up copious amounts of phlegm, okay? <laughs> and, like, I was like, ah, like, and I was like, well, this is Okay, what does this have to do with sewing? Hold on, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to sing it a few more times. So all that evening, phlegm monsters, right? Go to sleep, wake up the next day. And then I'm singing it again, and it goes so much better. Okay, sometimes it just takes one more day. Or practice. One more practice. Practice, practice. Well, da, 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 da. Now, when you go, but here's the deal. You talk about piano, and I'm talking about singing. Right. When you sing the song wrong, like your time is gone. But when you do sew the dress wrong, I know it's so much more material and well, you tangible. Can, yes, and you can see it, and it went wrong, and you have yes. to look at it. Yes. It is so much more... I get it. I it's it's right. a, it's got to be a more um, well, tangible reminder of your quote practice or failure. I, you know, I, when right? people come into the the yes, yes, I do believe yes. that. And here's another thing that happens 
comparing yourself to other people. Oh, yeah. So people walk into the aerial class, and all they've had is introduction to the silks, so to speak, uh -huh. right? And they walk in, and there's all levels of people in this class, right? People that have been there a year, people that have been there two weeks. And the teacher's up there doing something, and somebody gets up on the silks, and bam, they just, you know, do, do it. it. Right. It looks great. They got they got poised. They're pointing their toes. Yeah. They're they're extending their arms and everything. And you get up there and you can barely climb up <laughs> to get on this. And these people are like, oh, my God. And I go, no one walked in here being able to do this right. the first day. Right. There is no one that walked in there and did it the first day. Now, some people it takes longer than others, right? Some people can do some things better than than people can do. Some people have a natural affinity for one thing versus the other. It's just who we are. But I just really think whatever is happening that you're throwing a third of your stuff away or a half of your stuff away, I'm so afraid these people are going to get discouraged. Yeah, and angry and, yes. and not want to sell I anymore. mean, I would be. Yeah, absolutely. I would really be well, discouraged. And that's why I... I, people come in the group often and say, like, where should I start? Right. I think that's really great. And I hope that we can come up with a little program, like I was telling you before the podcast, how to get back into sewing. We can suggest, right. you know, a few patterns or a few things to well, do. I think the Easy Tea is a great place. I do. I think the leggings are a great place. I do think that is true. I think our leggings class is excellent because you're learning to measure a lot of places. Yeah. You know, and I believe the instruction on there is quite extensive mm -hmm. on knits. So, you know, that and floozy doozy is really simple. Well, and the leggings are something that can be made into so many different things. It, absolutely. And like lots of people wear leggings right, right. now. You know, so I, I agree. Those classes where you are kind of drafting your own. And people, I think, are resistant, I guess, to the drafting of their own clothing. I've heard from group members that someone in another sewing group will say, I want a leggings pattern that fits. And they're like, well, try this class. And they're like, I don't want to draft my own. Okay. If you don't well, draft it, yeah. it's probably not going to fit. Well, if you're having trouble with other I patterns. just think it's so funny when people go, drafting, it takes, no, it takes a lot more time to cut out somebody's pattern who fits some arbitrary body. Right. And then try and fit it to yourself. So, when you draft, not only are you hopefully going to get closer to a good fit on the first try, you're also learning. Oh, aren't you? Yep, learning you're learning. About that. You're learning your body. You're learning Structure. why that curve is there, yeah. or why that pattern piece looks that way. Yeah. It makes. I think. I just think it's such a better way to learn. You know, that is the way people used to sew. I think that that's a really good. Uh, you know, yes. I just think it's a good piece of information to have if you came from quilting, bag making, children's garment background. You are used to just getting out the pattern, cutting it. Well, you only had to together. fit a square. That's right. Okay. Yes. So you're used to just getting out the pattern. The, that is, those are the skills that you had to develop. Right. And they are skills. And you do have Absolutely. to cut accurately, yes. right? So there's one. So hey, and match, you know, match pattern pieces. Hey, and, hey and, I'm yes. going to bring this around so nicely right now, okay? Oh, just, she's, oh she's had an epiphany. Take, take a listen, all right? So... If you came from those backgrounds, you needed to cut accurately. You learned about design, you know, da 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 da. So our one extra little, you know, what do I want to say, glitch that we're throwing in is it's for you. And it has to fit you for you to be happy. Right. So that's where that drafting stuff can come in. Yeah. Right? Oh, I, sorry. I guess oh, I thought that was really good. Can you applaud for me or so? No. Oh, yes. Oh, oh Mallory, Mallory, Mallory. <laughs> well, um, I think... The other thing that's happened actually with us, we have talked about this and how to make people successful at sewing. And you know that's my big thing. Yeah. I want people to be successful. I want people to like what they're doing. Um, I want it to be their therapy. I want it to be their go-to outlet. Um, every you know, creative outlet is so important to so many people. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, man. People who don't have it. I don't know. I don't know what hey, they do. Can I can I share something with oh, you? Oh no, she's. Can I share something with you? I guess, but you never let me finish. I'm sorry. Let me let you need to finish, and then I got to share this. Yeah, Go you ahead. probably Go confused ahead. me. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I I was just but, so excited. But, but successful, and I think what I was going to say about us, especially with the floozy doozy. Now this is July <laughs> of 2018. Um, 
we have come up with a semi draft, a quasi drafting. I called it a pattern and drafting guide. It is. I thought that was a good. So title. those people who just want to cut it out, just, I mean, it's very, very much in between, and is going to fit you so much better than just a pattern. Like I said, for that arbitrary body type. So what I was going to say about creativity is I think a lot of you knew when I was like reading everything by Gretchen Rubin for a while. Now I'm reading everything by Brene Brown. And she talks about creativity and how she studied people and the people who were whoop, <laughs> who were the happiest, the most joyful. She calls them like wholehearted people, you know, people who are able to enjoy life and like have a good time, right? Um, they all have a creative outlet. And she said that creativity, like if you don't use it, if you don't have a creative outlet, it does not go unexpressed. It will express itself in anxiety. It it's will express else. itself in rage. It will express itself in a in Something in destructive a, or something negative. destructive. It can express itself in addiction. And I was just like, whoa. Like, I got chills a little bit. Because I've never been able to put my finger on, like, why the creativity was so important to me. So, being addicted, you, you know, should, it's much better to be addicted to sewing, <laughs> right? Well. Th th than some harmful substance to your body. And I guess one could say, when she says creation, or creativity, when we say, when we say creativity, we think of, like, painting and sewing and dancing and da-da-da. Well, like, when you have an addiction to something, a substance, a food, mm -hmm. a da da da, you're just putting a lot of energy into getting that. Right. And I think that we all know someone or we have a story about that. And so the creativity is a productive, creating a good thing, you know, out of it. Where I just didn't I didn't really see like sort of like creativity and like sort of destruction necessarily as flip sides of the same coin. I didn't really realize how she sort of described them being linked. And I'm sure that someone could argue that this isn't true or whatever. Well, there's many but, sayings about, you know, idleness. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. Um, that maybe that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're not if you're not making something, you'll make something that doesn't help you. You right. know, you can it goes the other way. Yes. And so then when you do get to have a creative outlet, you get to get some like perspective and some joy and it helps you in other areas of your life. You know, right. and I I was just like, I guess maybe it was a little uh what's that called? Confirmation bias. It's like, yeah, I knew that. I knew creativity is important. <laughs> Duh, you know, Brene. Like, you know, so anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, so we want you while you're being creative to be happy so that you keep having your creative outlet so you're making productive things and you're right. not throwing a third of it away. And we, I just feel so bad for these I know. people. Like, no, I, I, like, I just, oh, it's, it's like, I just don't think it has to be that way. And it's also hard, you know, I, I'm glad we don't, in a lot of ways, I'm glad we don't have the store anymore because. It was, like, a lot of work, and, and I mean, it's not like I don't want to work hard, but it wasn't where I wanted to be all the time. I just feel like we reach so many more people. We do, but then sometimes I'm like, I just wish I, I could know. come help you. I know, you. if I was in you person. Know, yeah. Well, but, you know, we also didn't get to – and, and having the store yeah. meant we couldn't make patterns. It's very we true. We could – you yes, know, these yes. things couldn't happen. It was just so consuming. It was so much. But, but I do sometimes – feel that way now maybe this person's never listened to one of our podcasts maybe yeah i thought about start. that too maybe we can help i thought about you know. that too but uh, all you have to do is say alexa that's right we are um uh, alexa is now pulling from tune in uh, a podcast engine i don't know if everybody knows how podcast we're wrapping up the episode now okay um <laughs> <laughs> tune in uh and and like apple podcasts and and all these places you know podcasters we host our own podcast on our site and those sites like Stitcher or Podcast Addict or whatever, they are just engines that kind of deliver that to you. Okay, so the file is always being downloaded from our site. So Alexa, for a while there, was only giving podcasts, I think, from Spotify. And not everyone is on Spotify. Spotify does not want everyone's podcast, oh, I guess, oh, you know. Yes. And I really haven't explored how to get on there because – I don't know. Not that I don't care, um, but I, it's not my priority. And so anyway, today 
Derek asked Alexa to play Stuff You Should Know, and uh-huh, Alexa and said it, it was from Tune In, not from Spotify. Ah. And I was like, Alexa, stop. Alexa, play Sewing Out Loud. Sorry, I can't find the song Sewing Out Loud. Uh-uh. Alexa, play podcast Sewing Out Loud. And she was like. There is a Sewing Out Loud song, though. like, okay. <laughs> we haven't published it. <laughs> anyway, right. so yeah, uh, it was. She's, you, we're on there, okay? Um, you can you can listen to Sewing Out Loud via Alexa. All right, well, we hope that we can help you to be creative and successful. Something I didn't share, I got a really nice email from Issa, who is a Sew Here Sew Porter, so thank you very much, Issa. And she mentioned that she's going through a lot of uh, change in her life, and she used some of our tips to make sewing successful for her their tips given long ago, but they oh, stuck with her. Yeah. You know, and so I don't want to share details because she really didn't give me permission to do that yet. But uh, I I was like, good, we are being useful. You know, we are being helpful go. to people. And I think that, um, yeah, I think that I hope this podcast help you not throw away so many things, you know. But if you do have to, that's okay too. <laughs> Right? It's Just okay hide them away. in the bottom of the, right. the trash can. Just yes. don't let them like live on in your don't look in at your them brain and, and your be heart. Miserable about yeah. them. Start on the next thing. Right? Learn and and move on. All right, mom, take it away. So know that Mallory and I want you to so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit sewhere.com. <laughs>